I'm going to go through this. This is a combined science GCC physics paper. This is paper one. It's an OCR gateway paper, but whichever exam board you're doing, well, it's early enough in your kind of um, time to just think, well, this is just a bunch of questions and it's going to be useful for every exam board. The nine to one specs are pretty similar. So I'm going to jump straight into the visualizer. I will pause at the end. If you have any questions in the chat, then we, we can, I can have a little look at those. Anything that haven't been made clear, absolutely, I will look at those. Um, but I think it just works better if I just jump in now because people who are really keen just to see the papers and watch this recorded, then make sure you're subscribed. But um, it's better, I think, if we just get straight into it. So awesome. Um, later on, I'm going to go through the second one of these papers. So there'll be another feed of these. If you're an A-level student, then um, don't despair. I'm not doing any A-level papers today, but I will do this Easter. Uh, maybe leave a comment if there's something that you want, something that you think is important for your revision over this Easter. Um, and in the description, there are some suggested videos that you can be using your time because you're straight on it this Easter, working really, really hard. All right, so without further ado, let's just jump straight into the paper. Here's the first one. Um, this is, you've got to imagine some compasses around a current carrying wire. Okay, and it just asks you which compass experiences the greatest magnetic field strength. Now, I would always kind of just read the question before I read the, the stem of the question, if that makes sense. And then I'm kind of looking for the thing that I'm looking out for. So it's asking me for the greatest magnetic field strength. So now when I read it, I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to decide that? Well, okay, um, the greatest magnetic field strength is going to be around the one with the biggest current. So it's definitely going to be one of these two. And it's going to be strongest, closest to the wire. So it's this one, it's C. And which of the following is the definition of a specific heat capacity? Right, okay, so um, specific heat ca capacity is the energy needed to take a, um, a kilogram of material up by one degree Celsius. Now, um, I would always suggest that in a multiple choice, you think of the answer before you start reading them. Now I'm just looking really for the right units. One kilogram, one degree Celsius, that's fine. It's not gonna be one gram or 10 degrees Celsius, so there we go. You can obviously remember the equation, energy is mass times super heat capacity times temperature change. They give you that on the formula sheet, um, that equation anyway, uh, so that applying that to this would allow you to get the answer. Carrying on. Student wishes to draw a diagram of a circuit they've created. Um, this is just, do you know your circuit symbols, basically? Which one shows a variable resistor? Right, so which we're looking at for the variable resistor. Well, they're all, well, these are all resistances that can change. This is a fuse, this is a thermistor, well, it's kind of upside down. This is an LDR, depends on light. So it's this one, C. Okay, just make sure you memorize, just spend a few minutes to make sure you know all your circuit symbols. Which of the following is a non-contact force? Uh, drag, no two things need to be in contact for drag. Electrostatic, yeah, that sounds about right. Just check the rest. Tension is inside um, a string or something. And up thrust is when you're partially or totally submerged in a fluid. Um, be really aware of this up thrust. Loads of people make a mistake of that and think that any upwards force is an up thrust. Okay, in which circuit would a current flow? Basically, this is just diodes, isn't it? Okay, diode essentially, is, all of these are diodes. Diode is something that allows positive charge to flow in the direction of the play symbol. Okay, so it only allows charge in one direction, only allows current in one direction, and that's in the positive direction. So the longer side of a cell is the positive side, and this one is hooked to the positive side, so the answer is A. Okay, the first sort of half of the multiple choice tend to be pretty straightforward. They tend to be the standard demand ones. So we're getting towards some bit more thinking now we have to do to solve these problems. Okay, so which of the following is the same speed as 7.2 kilometers per hour? Essentially, all we're doing here is we are converting kilometers per hour into meters per second. Okay, well, to do that, you just take the prefix. So you times by a thousand, that's the kilo, and you divide by the number of seconds in an hour, which is 3,600. So taking your calculator, um, 7.2 times 1,000 divided by 3,600, boom, uh, 2. So the answer is A, 2. Okay, uh, moving on. A student is heating substances in four identical beakers. Some information about the contents is shown. They give you the mass and the specific heat capacity. So it's a similar one. We have to apply this equation or just our knowledge about specific heat capacity. Energy is mass times specific heat capacity times the temperature change. Um, which one 
which one uh, requires the greatest amount of energy? So in other words, in this equation, which one would give the largest E? Well, this has got the largest mass and the largest heat capacity. Okay, you might want to just check here. You obviously, um, one degree Celsius, so you can times it by one. You could just really quickly do two times 4,200 times one for each one. Yeah, one times 4,200 times one. This one, I guess, is the only other one that you will be thinking about it. But that number is going to be smaller than this one, so it's A. I didn't put them all through the calculator, I probably would do. Okay, um, cracking on. Which of the following is distance travelled by uh, between 0 and 6 seconds? So you've got a, gr a velocity time graph. Remember your rules for velocity time graph and distance time graphs are slightly different. This is this um, this is the velocity time graph and they're asking us for the distance. So that is the area underneath a velocity time graph and this the whole time, 0 to 6 seconds. So let's just divide it into two shapes, nice and easy. Don't think trapezium, I would suggest. Think triangles and squares because you know them really easily. Uh, area of a triangle is base times height time uh, over 2 plus the area of the little square 15 times 3 add those together in your calculator so fraction 15 times 3 over 2 and then add 15 times times 3 and boom there you are 67.5 67.5 is the answer okay C next one how can mass be calculated well you've got these different op options okay um, I guess you could think about these ones. Gravity, well, we don't say gravity. We say gravitational field strength, so I'm actually going to get rid of this one straight away. But uh, basically, is it this one or this one? Force equals mass times acceleration is the equation that you remember. Rearrange for mass. Mass is force over acceleration, so the one you want is B, force divided by acceleration. That is actually, incidentally, that is the best definition of mass. Uh, mass is the force per acceleration. So higher mass, more force to accelerate. Another one, student lifts four objects onto a set of shelves, object A, B, C, and D. Which one gains the most gravitational potential energy? So you need to memorize this equation. Gravitational potential is MGH, mass times gravitational field strength times height. And um, this one, basically all I've done here is I've just worked all those out really, really quickly. And again, we're looking for the most mass and the highest height, but uh, checking because this one's got the least mass but does have the highest height, so just quickly do that multiplication to decide that's D. Okay, um, yes, I will certainly go through uh, some A level pass papers in this way as well. I'm planning on doing, doing a few in this next couple of days. If you've got requests, then do by all means leave them in comments. This paper is a combined science paper, it's OCR Gateway. A, but it, this this is relevant to all GCSE students. Okay, so if you're a GCSE triple scientist or a combined scientist, this is relevant to you regardless of what exam board you do. So let's crack on. Okay, I want to get through these, and then at the end, if you've got any questions or comments, then um, then just ask. Okay, a student uses a small motor to lift a toy car. There we go. <laughs> a student uses a small motor to lift a toy car, and. Uh, you just have to calculate the work done. So this was a recall your equation, work done is force times distance. Uh, you're told the car has a weight, so you did need to recognize that weight is the force and the distance is one meter. So work done is force times distance gives you 0 0.05 times by one, which is obviously 0 0.05. Now, um, where are the three marks for that? The first mark is for uh, rec recall of the equation. The second mark is for uh, inputting the data in the right place. You just check that they're not um, in funny units. Just check you don't need to do any conversions and then go ahead and do the calculation. So um, always think to yourself, right, what data do you have? You've got the, got the force, you've got the height. What are you trying to calculate? Select your equation, input numbers, and then do the things right. Now some of them times are going to be harder than that, aren't they? So calculate the power of the motor if it takes five seconds to um, travel one meter distance. So we know the work done from the previous one and whatever you actually got for that previous one, you would get error carried forward for this. So the definition of power is the rate of transfer of energy or work done over time. So the work done is 0 0.05 and five seconds. Just checking yet seconds and joules, they're the correct ones. So now reach for the calculator and I'll put the numbers in. 0 0.05 over five gives us 0 0.01. Now just check, have we done everything we've been asked to do? Oh look, 
state the unit. We've calculated, but we haven't stated the unit yet. And I'll ask you all, what is the unit of power? Correct, what is the unit of power? Right, moving on. Okay, the motor uses two cells in series. Each cell has a potential difference of 1.5 volts. So you know each one's got 1.5 volts. This is the setup, two cells in series. Write down the total potential um, difference. Well, this is one of your rules about circuits you need to remember, is that uh, um, potential difference is sum in series. So if you take uh, the, the one potential difference and add it to the other, you get the total potential difference. So this is three volts, but it's only what, worth one mark. So there's not a lot of thinking there. The motor has a resistance of six ohms. Okay, that's R. Calculate the current when it's in use. We know V from the previous one, don't we? We know, we know voltage from the previous one, potential difference from the previous one. Use the equation. They've given us the equation here, so there isn't a mark for recall, but there is a mark for rearranging. So this first one here, that is worth a mark, just, just for stating current is voltage over resistance, even if you then put the numbers in the wrong direction. So you should always be showing your working out. Now, 3 over 6, now even because we're lazy, we're just going to do that in the calculator because... The calculator doesn't make silly mistakes like that. And you can always, therefore, retain all your brain power for actually thinking about how to solve the problems rather than do that. So there's a, a mark for getting them all in the right, right place. There was no units to convert, and a mark, obviously, for the final answer. So suggest the change he can make to, um, to achieve this. What does he want to achieve? He wishes to increase the time. Now, read that really carefully, because a lot of people actually... In, when they answered this, um, they actually wrote uh, ways that they would reduce the time, so they would increase the power. So they actually wrote add more cells. And they were looking for if a, a change they could make, suggest a change they could make, and a practical change. So not just reduce the potential difference, not just change the motor or something like that. Exactly how could they change this thing, this experiment, to achieve this? And the obvious one is to remove one of the cells, so then you have 1.5 volts. But you could also say add mass to the car would increase the work done and therefore would increase the time if it was running at the same power, of course. Moving on. Okay, so um, teacher demonstrates static electricity using a Van de Graaff generator. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Explain why this happens. Oh, yeah, this is the really cool experiment. I love doing this one. You put some foil containers, you turn on the Van de Graaff and off they go. Fly, 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 fly. The foil containers fly off one by one from the dome. Explain why this happened and use ideas about charge. And you'd be amazed how many times I see this as an examiner, as a um, teacher, uh, where we say use ideas about something and people don't mention charge at all. So um, what happens then? The dome becomes charged. So first of all, this dome becomes charged. We could say charge is transferred to or from the dome. Got a mark there saying that there's something happening. The charge is transferred to the containers and you needed this because they are conductors. This is the second mark here all have the same charge and like charges repel. Okay, if you see how we've solved this by referring to charge, talking about how they become charged and then talking about this forces now. And they're repelled from each other, that's the one by one, that's the clue there. They're repelled from each other and then finally the dome. So that's the final mark there. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, explain questions can sometimes be a bit hard, but just try it and put your ideas down in a kind of logical sequence. And I would always think to yourself, as you read, kind of plan out before you put your pen down, okay? Because a lot of people, they're waffling on and then running out of space, and then that's a bit of a panic. Okay, so um, next point here then, um, calculate how long it would take, so we need a time for a charge of five, so that's, yeah, time is what we're looking for. Five coulombs, that's okay, 25 milliamps. So the first thing I do, can you see that, is I've converted out of milliamps and into amps, because I know that I need to use SI units, and that is amps. So I just write 25 times 10 to the minus three, which is milli. Then, uh, well, they've given me the equation. Incidentally, I memorize that as current is charge flow over time because that's just the definition of current. The first mark in this one is for rearranging. I hope you can see that. Um, it's four mark question. So you get a mark for getting time is uh, charge flow over current. And then I, I almost made a mistake here, which is why you should be looking, um, making sure you're writing down your work in because if I'd have made that mistake there, then at least I'd have got this first mark here, but um, I put them in the wrong way around. So I just crossed it out one time through and I did I carried on underneath here. So coulombs is the charge flow and the current is 25 times 10 to the minus three. So just make sure we can all do that. Now there's a, there is a mark for that and there's a mark for having the units converted. So if you've got five over 25, you get two on this. 
Okay, so um, five, and I'm using the fraction button, 25 times 10 to the minus three. Make sure you can use that times 10 to the button, and the answer is 200, so there's a final mark for that. Now, although you would get, you would get um, four marks for having 200, if you made a mistake, you wouldn't get um, as many marks. You wouldn't get any marks if you made a mistake. Okay, so one of the dreaded kind of longer written questions. And I suggest um, there's one in the description. There is a longer written questions video that if you're kind of thinking, well, oh, I absolutely hate six markers or longer written ones, then I suggest you go ahead and watch that because this is quite a skill. So a student removes a material from a freezer and heats it up. So taking out the freezer, see it starts at minus 30, heats up the material, they use a heater with a constant power output. So this, the rate of energy transfer to the thing is the same then plots a heating curve of the material as its temperature rises. So temperature and time. Not told any values of time, but that doesn't matter. Describe and explain what the graph tells us about the material being heated. Great question for making sure you know the difference between the describe and then explain. So describe is what is it like? Explain is it why is it like it is? So um, firstly, my first paragraph is describe. And this is the only time that I care about capital letters and sentences. I've still used a bullet point kind of habit there, right? But um, this is my first paragraph, and this is my second paragraph. But firstly, describe it. Initially, the temperature rises rapidly, so you can see it's, it's a curve, isn't it? So they want that detail in there, great detail. The rate of temperature increase falls until the temperature remains constant at minus seven. So I've told them exactly what the temperature that it remains constant at. It's just descriptive detail. There's nothing, got no thinking needs to go into this really, it's just how it is, what it is like. Um, the temperature then increases rapidly again, so it's a, the gradient is high is another way of saying that, higher at first and then a, sh a smaller gradient later on, before once again slowing and remaining constant at 58 degrees Celsius. So again, there's another temperature up here which is 58 degrees Celsius. I haven't done any explaining yet, I've just said how it is like. The temperature rises again after this, so lastly there. Now, um, the second part, explain it, well minus 7 is the melting point. Okay, or well, before minus seven, it was a solid and after minus seven, it was a liquid. So the minus seven is where, the t uh, where it's changing state is the important point to make. The temperature remains constant at these points, oh sorry, 58 degrees C is its boiling point. Temperature remains constant at these points because the energy is being used to change the material state rather than increase the kinetic energy of the molecules. Now that's good enough. There are some other um, marks you can kind of get. You could have got the same way by saying solid here, liquid here, gas there or just by talking about the energy is used to break the intermolecular forces, if you like, um, that, that would be perfectly fine explanation material. But this is good enough for six marks because I've done everything that I've been asked to do. So once I've finished um, this, I'm actually going to read back the question and make sure that I've covered everything that I've been asked to do. Yes, I've described the graph. Yes, I've explained why the graph is like it is. You could have also, one kind of bonusy mark that they ask was, um, was uh, you could have said this is definitely not water because it's, it's not at zero degrees Celsius and it is not boiling at 100, so you could say something like that. Okay, moving on. So I'll get chat just at the end if that's all right, Fluffy. And uh, Rach, so objects in free fall eventually reach terminal velocity. Draw a label diagram to show the forces acting on an object when it's falling at terminal velocity. In my experience for this new GCC, people's free body diagrams are pretty poor. Remember, when you do a free body diagram, or do it in pencil and do it with a ruler for a start, you're just considering the forces on one object. You don't need to draw a picture, and you're just thinking what are the lengths of those forces. Now, this tests your knowledge of terminal velocity, which is a state where the weight and drag are equal, so there's no longer accelerating. So you need them to be equal lengths, and you need them to be opposite directions, and you need the correct names. You could have said, um, you could have said gravitational force, something like that, but not gravity. It's not good enough, right? So one for weight and drag, or you could have said air resistance as well. One for equal lengths, and one for opposite directions. All right. Use a ruler. Make sure they're equal lengths but we will judge them by I, okay. A student measures two forces. The forces are five newtons and three newtons. They act at 90 degrees to each other, draw a scale drawing to determine the resultant force. So in other words, whenever you're doing a scale drawing, always just combine the forces top to tail. So you see, all I've done is, I've, it doesn't matter which direction they are, as long as they're at right angles to each other, I've drawn one three centimeter line in the ruler, and then one five centimeter line at right angles to that. And I've done them top to tail. So wherever one force finishes, I've started the next force. 
and then the resultant force is just the kind of the from start to finish of those forces if you like it's the resulting force it's the force kind of left over and you can measure that and it came out of 5.8 centimeters which was my scale that i decided um so it's 5.8 newtons now they needed to be at right angles to each other they needed to be the same scale okay you could have doubled it you could have done six and ten if you wanted um, for the second mark and you needed 5.8 for the last one now you could resolve this by Pythagoras but because they've told you to do it with a scale drawing I don't think you get all of the marks you did Pythagoras you probably just get one okay an object traveling a circle at a constant speed has a changing velocity state y so this is just what do you know about velocity well a velocity is a speed in a given direction a velocity is a vector direction matters so all of the, the point is changing velocity because the direction is changing you could have said you know it's accelerating it's changing velocity but you know, velocity is vector any of these things but that you only needed the direction is changing moving on and almost at the end of this paper now so Fleming's left hand rule is used to show the direction of the force produced we were chatting about that earlier weren't we uh, direction of the force produced when a current flows in a magnetic field explain how so what is it basically Fleming's left hand rule well Fleming's left hand rule is it shows the direction of I could put okay uh, three quantities which act at right angles to each other and a lot of people get confused with this stuff don't they because well um, you've got directions rather than sizes but I think about it almost like an equation but it's an equation to work out direction rather than the actual number so you've got the, these things, well the thumb, the, this, the, this is the detail you need to get the answer. The thumb represents the force, the first finger represents the magnetic field, and the second finger represents the current. Okay, and you just need to use it to be, be able to work out directions of things basically. So that's all the marks that you needed. You need the point that they're at right angles to each other. So we could always just remember this little diagram, and you'd get a little mark if you draw a little diagram like this. And you said uh, that would be, let's have a little look, that would be F, that would be uh, this one, uh, current I, and that would be B, right? Well, they, we could just memorize that and use that, but then you can rotate that around in three dimensions on the page. And I know they get a bit confusing, but you can just do them, just practice a few. We'll practice with this one, even though it's not the question, if you like. Practice a few goes, right? So let's let's practice the direction of this. It's not the, the answer. So north to south, so first finger line north to south. This side, look, current is coming out of the page so it's the direction of this thing here so therefore the force is upwards and this side everything's the same but the current is now going into the page so that just changes my hand like that the field's still the same direction across the page so the force on this side is down they didn't need these arrows to get this mark incidentally but they could ask you to do that so use the diagram to explain how rotation is caused in the motor. So rotation is only going to happen if these two forces are in opposite directions. So I think they're asking us about rotation. So how are those two opposite directions forces um, created? Well, current flows in the coil, and so magnetic fields are um, you know around the wire. So remember that that's the right hand grip rule. Okay, you've got a current here. Magnetic field flows in the directions of your fingers. So the first one is just to say, well, you put a current and you get a magnetic field. This magnetic field interacts with the permanent magnetic field. Yeah, this idea interacts, two fields overlap and interact. So causing forces in opposite directions on the opposite sides of the coil. And that's your last mark there, opposite directions on opposite sides. You could have, have talked about the commutator for one last possible way of getting these three marks. There's basically four marks available and you get a maximum of three from them. So you could have said the commutator switches the connection every half turn of the motor. Okay, moving on. Calculate the magnetic flux density on 0.5, so this is the length, conductor, current, 0.8, and force, 0.6. So your first thing of all calculations is identify your data. What are you trying to calculate? The magnetic flux density. So from your equation sheet, you find force is magnetic flux density times current times length, or Fred equals Bill, as we remember it. Uh, rearrange for B, okay, that's one mark there in the bag straight away if we can do my rearranging. I've already checked, none of them had any prefixes on, so we're absolutely fine, they are perfectly fine units. Now sub the units in, sub the numbers in, okay, get a mark for subbing the numbers in the right place. And then lastly, 1.5 Tesla is the unit, it's already given to us, is the answer.
Okay, so just think about it step by step. Data, um, have they got the correct units on them? What's the equation? Does it need rearranged? Uh, calculate using your calculator rather than your brain and then check and check the unit is sensible as well. Um, okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> This is this is this is paper one on OCR Indian game. Okay, so I don't know what FF, FFS means, but uh, uh, to be honest, it's all relevant, mate. All right. Um, so for the thermometer, so describe the the pattern shown by these results. So this is a practical do with the thermistor. You can have a little read of that bump as well. But basically, you could do all this without anything, just by describing the pattern. Right. So as something increases, how does something else change? As temperature increases the resistance decreases. Got a mark there? Great. What's the second mark gonna be for? What's the second mark gonna be for? And you gotta think about that really carefully. So you're not gonna get two marks where just one thing increases and another thing decreases. But ask yourself, is it directly proportional? Is it linear? Is it inversely proportional? What exactly is the um, relationship? What's the extra detail? Well, let's have a little look. From 10 to five, look, it decreases by a thousand. So five degrees Celsius and a thousand, is that the same? From 25 to 30, it only decreases by like about a hundred. So it's it's not linear, is it? It's not a, um, and in fact, you get the mark for saying it's not linear. But basically there's a larger change in resistance at the lower temperatures. So that's the answer there, like how I've given it. Okay, you can imagine it being a graph with a bigger gradient at first and a smaller gradient later. So the students have made mistakes when recording their results. And remember, they're always gonna ask you about recording the data. They're gonna ask you evaluate the data or they're gonna ask you evaluate the practical. They actually ask you both in, in a minute in this question as well. So identify two mistakes and explain what they should have done. So for this, each mark, you need to identify and explain what they should have done. So you have to do it twice. There's two mistakes and you need to give the thing they should have done right. You need to correct their mistake basically for each mark. So firstly, the mean for 20, has four significant figures here. You see that? We don't want, we want the same number of significant figures throughout. And in fact, the same sig figures as we measured to. So we measured to, well, these yeah, three significant figures, look. So all these should be three significant figures as well. So the mean for 20 has four significant figures, that's the mistake. It should therefore be seven, six, three ohms. In other words, three significant figures. So I've identified the mistake and corrected it. Then lastly, 720 is an anomaly. Can you see that there? This is quite a lot away. It's over 100 and, 110 away, and the rest of them are kind of 10-ish, 10, 10, 20 between them. So you should ignore that. So then recalculating the mean should be 610. So identify the mistake and correct it in that case. So suggest one way the experiment could be improved. So this is a practical thing. So now we're evaluating the method. Um, increase the range of temperatures used. So uh, this is, you know, you could very easily change this. You could get ice and get zero, and you could get hotter water all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius. So that would be an improvement. Now I'll just draw your attention to this because a lot of people said test more temperatures and you wouldn't get the results, you wouldn't get the marks for that. Okay, you could have said repeat for the anomalies and you could have said decrease the interval, but it needs to be quite specific, just saying to us, do more temperatures is not the same as increase the range. So test, if you said test really high temperatures or test temperatures, even if you'd have said test 40 degrees Celsius, you'd have got that mark because you've told us you need to increase the range. If you just take more readings at different temperatures, then it's not equivalent. Okay, last one then, um, 10 degrees C, that's the superfluous information actually in this one. The resistance is this. The mist has a power rating of this and they have converted it for us. That's very kind of us. We need to make sure that we use that in our um, calculation. I use that correctly. So it is in watts, but it's got that uh, prefix already on it. It's got that multiplier on it. They've given us the equation. It's one you do need to remember as well though. So there is P is I squared R. Rearrange for I, because they've asked us to calculate the maximum current. So basically move the I squared first Okay, I'll move the R really across. So I squared is P over R. And then root both sides to give you I equals root P over R. And make sure that you do that in the one. Now I'm putting the numbers in. And then finally, we've got, uh, yeah, I'll just make sure that you now do that. So root brackets, root fraction, and then um, 
75 times 10 to the minus 3. The calculator can just deal with all that. Look, it's, it's kept it all in that same um, bracket, that same root. And then boom, 200. Oh, I get all that number. Do some rounding as well. Well, they've used three significant figures, so I've gone for three significant figures as well. 6.28 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Okay, so that one was uh, loads of GCC questions. I hope it was useful for you. That was OCR Gateway GCC questions, um, but that's relevant for all the different exam boards. I'm going to have a really quick look at the chat to see if there's anything interesting going on. Um, can you please teach momentum and thinking distance? There will probably be a question on that later on in um, the next one because I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back and do the second one of these, this series of papers for you. Um, I think that'd be useful. Okay. Yeah, the Indian Gamer, there is, you know, there's more than one specification. They're very, very similar though, there's different specifications. So I suggest if you're desperate for more practice questions that you look at, if you're doing AQA, look at Edexcel, look at the two OCR specifications, and look at the Educast specification as well. I would suggest they're close enough to be relevant practice for you all. Uh, Rachel, um, do you have a schedule for when you're doing these walkthroughs over Easter? Not really. Um, I have three days where I'll be doing some live streaming and then pro possibly some evenings and possibly just a little bit off my phone when I'm up in um, in Scotland. But, I, but I'm just doing a few little bits and bobs for you all um, over this Easter. But if you if you ask, then I will put them out and I'll try and give you reminders. Like I will be back. Well, it's three o'clock now. I will be back at, let's yeah, let's just do it half past three. I'll be back with the next one of these papers, uh, which will be the OCR Gateway paper two. And I hope that helps. Um, and yet, yeah, Bashar, I will be doing some A-level A past papers, but it might be useful. Okay, you've asked for, what did you ask for? Electricity and materials ones. So I might just pull out some questions from electricity and materials and bash through those. If you've got requests, then please go ahead and put them in the comments and I will, um, I'll be back and I'll do my best to do them for you. All right, well, we'll catch you at, might be more like quarter to four, okay. But I'll catch you real soon with the second lot of these. And that'll cover pretty much all of the GCC in one, uh, in one sort of day. So thanks very much.